So, if we are, thank you for holding on till the end, last presentation of the conference. It's an honor. <laughs> So, I'm Fabio Mardiani, research associate at the Lofarian University of Lüneburg, and I'm speaking today on behalf of Lee Dutter, Max Kors, and myself. To, together, we are the core team of the Provenance Lab. At the Provenance Lab, we operate at the intersection of provenance research and data science. We are currently witnessing the increasing availability of digital provenances, mainly published on museum websites. This is, this is, in part, an outcome of the recent focus on the institutions related to contexts of injustice such as national socialism or colonialism. While more and more detailed information is included, that analysis remains very limited since provenance is published as a text. This is why at the Provenance Lab we explore new methodologies and technology, technologies for structuring provenance in linked open data and analyzing provenance data on a large scale. Here, I give you a first glance of what we're dealing with. It is an example of our provenance text from the website of the Art Institute of Chicago. It is important to note that US museums have been at the forefront of publishing provenance information online and are still today the most transparent institutions in that regard. Moreover, the American Alliance of Museums, AAM, has recommended a format, a format for vetting provenance text as early as 2001. Some of it you can see applied in this example. The history is recorded in, chron in chronological order when ending with its current owner, the Art Institute. Here I have highlighted the periods and semicolons which indicate to the reader whether a transfer of ownership was direct, divided by a semicolon, or not, then divided by a period, which indicate a gap in the historical reconstruction. Provenance texts can consist of multiple events, as in this example. And the single events can include known parties, if, for example, the art dealer Nodder & Co, highlighted in red, locations, highlighted in blue, dates, highlighted in green, and methods of transfer, highlighted in green. And because of this, provenance information is unique. It is unique because it brings together works of art, people, time, locations, transactions, and historical events into a network of relationships. And this is why Provence information is well being analyzed on a large scale for network and spatial analysis. But so far, the information has only been recorded to be understood by humans and not by machines. To sense this, we have developed a human in the loop workflow. Starting points are provenance records that are published as a text and were compiled by a provenance expert. Since it is resource intensive to structure provenance text manually, we are finalizing the use of artificial intelligence on provenance records to extract information through natural language processing techniques. This al allows us to structure large amount of data automatically. To ensure data quality and enrich it, a provenance expert supervises data extraction. So this dialogue between expert and machine we ensure a balance between quantity and quality of the data set. We have successfully experimented with event extraction from provenance text by approaching the problem with two natural language processing tasks. The first task is sentence boundary detection, or disambiguation, SBD. The purpose of SBD is to identify and disambiguate punctuation marks that separate sentences in a text. As I was saying, the, according to AAM uh, guidelines, events in a provenance text may be separated by a semicolon or a period, depending on whether the change of ownership is direct or not. However, certain such as period can be ambiguous. For example, a period indicating an abbreviation may or may not mark the end of a sentence. Once we have divided provenance text into event based on punctuation, the second task we have identified is pan categorization or classification. Similar to name entity recognition, this technique assigns the correct category to portions of text, in example, spans. A particular advantage is that categories can overlap, unlike name entity recognition, allowing for hierarchical structures. Here you can see an example of span categorization applied to a previously extracted provenance event. 
First, we can tag the method of transfer. The span sold is the method that tells us that a specific event has occurred. We can then identify the event arguments. For example, February 1957 refers to the time of the event, while Northern Co. New York refers to the party that participated in the event. Span categorization allows us to overlap tags. We can then assign the role of the party in Northern Co. New York. They are the receiver of the event. That is, those who process the artwork. With, with the ability to overlap categories, we can extract additional valuable information from the party. For example, Northern Co. New York is a group. Northern Co. is its name, while New York is its location. We conducted conducted an experiment in training deep learning models both for sentence boundary disambiguation and span categorization using data from the Art Institute of Chicago. We downloaded the dataset from the Art Institute which makes available the collection data to API and data dump. And I would say they are quite pioneers from that kind of transparency. We annotated the data to Docano, an open source text annotation tool, and we trained deep learning models from scratch to the Python library Spacey. The sentence boundary disambiguation model recorded an F1 score of 0.99, while the span categorization model achieved an F1 score of 0.94. Span categorization is a more elaborate task than sentence boundary disambiguation, but still very encouraging in results. As the last step of our methodology, we develop Prova, the provenance app. Prova is a human in the loop interface to enable the domain expert to interact with data extracted by artificial intelligence. A domain expert can interact with linked open data without previous technical knowledge. In addition, real-time integration with external resources such as the Getty Union list of artist names, Wikidata, uh, Zotero helps us to enrich information more easily. Each intervention is recorded in the data provenance of Earth provenance, which certifies the quality of the work done on the data by both humans and machines. He, here you can see an example of the previous event structured according to Linked Art. Linked Art is the data model which is used for uh, structuring provenance in linked open data. It is a CDOC CRM application profile that was de developed by a community of uh, practitioners from museums and research institutions. We experimented our methodology for the first time with the provenance of more than 11,000 objects published by the Art Institute of Chicago. Once we had we had structured the data automatically with the help of artificial intelligence, we were able to conduct a preliminary analysis on the agency of individuals. For example, in the histogram, we can see how individuals act differently after inheriting objects. Women are more likely to keep the inherited object and then bequeath it or give it to a museum, while other individuals are more likely to bring it back to the market by selling it. Despite promising results in using artificial intelligence to extract knowledge from provenance, the nature of this text presents challenges and biases that require the sensibility and experience of a provenance expert. We have identified four issues that introduce particular challenges in transforming provenance texts into provenance data. We have collected them under the acronym VISU, from the Latin the VISU with your own eyes, which highlight the needs of supervision on structuring process by an expert. Without control, we is making information preci precise, complete, objective, and certain that is not. The four issues are vagueness, that is the approximation of spatial and temporal information with expressions such as near Paris or circa 1945. Incompleteness, that indicates the gap in the historical reconstruction, so any lack of information that were well lost. Subjectivity is the formulation of hypotheses to fill gaps using historical sources, so the historical context in the hypothesis making um, of provenance. And finally, uncertainty, which is the degree of confidence in formulating hypotheses. To take care of this information, in addition to developing specific functionalities in the Prova interface, we implemented data modeling strategies, such as publishing linked open data provenance as a nano publication. 
we can find an example of how this information impacts provenance analysis in the provenance text we discussed earlier. The first recorded event describes how the object passed from the artist to a new owner, Galerie Canvila. However, the event is hypothetical, thus subjective, and was formulated with only a certain level of confidence, hence uncertain. In fact, we find the term probably in the text. We are sure that Galerie Canvila was the owner of the object, but we are not completely sure that it, uh, they took it from the artist directly. Moreover, the event is incomplete. It is not known when and where it occurred. Bridging these gaps can help us to evaluate the hypothesis. We can therefore turn to the biographical information of the parties involved. First, we can assume that the event happened in Paris, since both the artists, André de Rain, and the Galerie Canvila were in Paris. As for the date of the event, the lack of information on the beginning and end of Galerie Canvila limits us. Being able to access Galerie Canvala's periods of activity by reaching the biographical information allows us to make a further assumption. We know that Galerie Canvala was active from 1907 to 1914. Since, since Cagne, the artwork, was painted in 1910, we can assume that the event occurred between 1910 and 1914. We thus formulate vague information that approximates the time gap. In light of this new knowledge, the certainty of the hypothesis increases. Given the spatiotemporal proximity, proximity between the creation of the object and the acquisition by Galerie Canvala. Analyzing the data extracted from the Provence text published by the Art Institute of Chicago, we notice that incomplete events are more the rule than the exception. In fact, 91% of the events don't have a location while 29% don't have a date, even an approximate one. In light of the gaps emerging from event analysis, we investigated the availability of biographical information from parties involved in the Art Institute provenance events. As we have seen in the previous example, we can try to bridge the spatiotemporal gaps in the events using biographical information. Of the 8,817 parties extracted from the Art Institute provenances, 15% have a start date. For example, a birth date or a formation date in case of a, a, an institution or organization. 24% have an end date, a death date, or a dissolution date. 68% are associated with at least one location but only 11% of the parties can be said to be complete in that both start and end dates and at least one location are recorded. To support museums cataloging, the Getty Research Institute hosts and edits the Getty Union list of artist names, ULAN, a controlled thesaurus of biographical, biographical information about artists and other parties, both individuals and groups. Uyulan uh, is published as linked open data, making it an authoritative repository for museums to edit their biographical data. We therefore experimented with preliminary entity linking between parties from the Art Institute provenances and Getty Uyulan entities. In total, matches were funded for 1,296 parties, 15% of the parties, and as parties Oh, and of those parties, 87% are incomplete in the Art Institute of Chicago. Thus, we have the opportunity to edit those parties with new information recorded in ULAN. In the slide, we can see how effective entity linking was in filling the gaps in the biographical information of parties under analysis. As for parties linking, linked with ULAN but lacking a location, ULAN provides at least one for 54% of them. Regarding temporal information, such as parties start and end dates, a start date could be found for 71% of the incomplete parties linked with ULAN. Moreover, ULAN provided an end date for 66% of the incomplete linked parties. Thus, we have observed that although it was not possible to link all the parties to ULAN, when it is possible, this helps fill biographical gaps. In light of this, we should also consider how a museum can contribute to ULAN as an authoritative source of biographical data. 
Indeed, when linking the museum's party with ULAN entities, we can see that the Art Institute of Chicago holds some information on the not yet available in ULAN. This is specifically true for parties' locations. In the slide, focusing only on Art Institute parties with a location that are linked with ULAN, we can see that 38% don't have a location in ULAN. While completing the biographies of already existing ULAN entities is useful, including entities recorded in the museum but not yet in ULAN, has potentially an even bigger impact on the cells. Previously, we discussed how 11% of the parties in the Art Institute are considered complete by having both start and end dates and at least one location. Of these, 709 parties, 70%, are not represented in ULAN. Thus, the process of extracting data from museums from a text and publishing information in linked open data becomes an opportunity to expand ULAN. The importance of the role of museums as contributor contributors to ULAN can be further accessed by looking at the gender distribution of individuals in the Art Institute data and in ULAN. Female parties in the Art Institute account for the 25% of individuals. This distribution is almost double of that of ULAN, where individuals with a female gender are 13% of recorded individuals. This proportion is in line with that of the entities we were able to link between the Art Institute and ULAN, of which 14% are a female gender. From this, we conclude that a key to addressing the endemic bias of women's underrepresentation in ULAN could be the accession and publication of museum provenance data in linked open data. Ennis Wong Coburg is an example of those important female personalities that have been, that we can find in the provenance data but not are currently excluded from ULAN. Ennis Wong Coburn was an art collector who was donated to the Art Institute of Chicago to help shape the museum's identity. Her collection included, among others, works by Monet, Degas, Renoir, Van Gogh, and Picasso. Hence, her figure is crucial in analyzing modern art collecting in the United States. The Art Institute of Chicago may become an authority by contributing data on this neglected personality given as importance in the history of the institutions and the archival mat material held by the Art Institute. The current main project of the Provenance Lab is Modern Migrants, paintings from Europe in US museums. The project addresses when, why, and how paintings from Europe entered US museum collections. At the moment, the dataset of the Modern Migrants project contains more than 6,000 paintings from 36 different institutions. To this cross-institutional point of view, we can explore how local historical heroes, like Hennis von Coburn, are not only related to one institution, such as the Art Institute of Chicago, but have been protagonists of a larger, more complex, and linked history. In conclusion, transforming museum provenance into linked open data is an opportunity not only to reduce museum data, but also to expand authoritative knowledge hubs, such as the Gettys ULAN. ULAN, in fact, can, be, can help synthesize the research effort of individual institutions facilitating the exchange of data. At the same time, individual institutions have the authority and volume of information that make them strategic stakeholders for knowledge hubs such as ULAN. Thank you for your attention. You can find more information about the Provence Lab through our socials, and if you wonder what is a painting, you may ask our website, whatisapainting.com. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.